You're listening to Bright by Your Side with Jen Dyer. Up-leveling in the age of anxiety with groundbreaking science. Are you looking to live your life with more flow and ease? Every episode, she has enough surprising information and tips that you will be able to come away with at least one nugget that could change your life. You will learn to build resilience to stress and overwhelm, find joy every day, and manifest your dreams. Gain understanding of your little terrified human that is holding you back and that brave, bright inner being that is nagging you to move forward. She's here to help you feel empowered to make that change. Bright by Your Side starts now. Welcome to Bright by Your Side with Jen, up-leveling in the age of anxiety with groundbreaking science here on Transformation Talk Radio. My name is Jen Dyer, and I am your host. And today we are having a discussion about triggers. And I have an expert for you, so don't leave. I have an expert. So we're gonna talk about navigating your own triggers and the triggers of other people, of those around you. So um, emotional intelligence is a big topic right now because our world is changing and people are stressing out. People feel like they don't have enough funds. They feel like they are, their health might be declining. They're stressed out about the career scape changing. And you know, when people get a little tense, they tend to uh, get their triggers tend to tend to set them off a little more quickly. So the news though, is that you are responsible for your own triggers. So I have help for you. I have help for you. So today, my expert, he's an expert on managing triggers. Um, He is the founder of Growing Unstuck, a private practice where he helps adolescents and families find acceptance, healing, and the capacity for growth within themselves. He facilitates a peer support group for students and specialists within the It Takes a Village Institute, which I, I love that name. He also serves as the Mid-Michigan Peer Support Group Facilitator for the nonprofit Broken People, which is a mental health support organization. He is a certified adolescent and family trauma specialist, and he can help us manage our emotions, even and especially when we're parenting. So please welcome Jeremiah Fulmer to the show. Jeremiah, welcome. Thank you, Jen. It's nice to be here. It's so good to see you. You too. So, you know, I'm so excited you're here because, you know, triggers are real. It seems to be one of those words that people tend to throw around, um, but it is real. So, and there is science behind why some people have difficulty managing their emotions. So can you give us a brief overview of what triggers are and the science behind it? Yeah. Yeah. We can start and we can keep it um, simple for the most part, because the science behind it can get a little bit complicated, but uh I just kind of want to start with, we're going to break the brain down into two, 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 two pieces. You have the prefrontal cortex, which is the front part of the brain, and this is your administrative function. This is how you plan, how you uh, tackle problems, how you navigate through difficult social uh, situations, that kind of thing. Uh, the back part of the brain, the reptilian part of the brain is the amygdala, and there's more to it than this. I just, I, I really want to keep this simple. So. Yep. Uh, the amygdala is in charge of the emotional state. It is it is wired into your autonomic nervous system. This is the fight, flight, freeze, fawn response. So uh, to speak to what you're talking about, as far as people having trouble managing their triggers, depending on um, developmental traumas, acute chronic traumas exposed to us during childhood, our developmental years, there can create an imbalance in the development between those two spheres. So if we are not, um, I I don't know, if we are not constantly being pushed into the development of the the frontal lobe, the administrative function, like a lot of kids today are just, they're just plugged in, they're just getting the emotional hits off of the social media stuff, off of the, the electronic devices. Moms and dads are too busy to like, my generation, we grew up a little bit different. You know what I mean? Like we had to govern ourselves. We had to, we were in social situations that we had to navigate. We were outside taking care of ourselves, doing things. So, so we had to learn how to operate that administrative function. The world's just a lot different now. I think people now are coming up, especially the younger generations behind us. 
they're spending more time in this emotional activation state where they're seeking the dopamine hits. They're seeking the, they're not learning how to regulate themselves. They're not learning how to plot, how to plan, how to navigate situations. So, so when the trigger happens and trigger activation, um, emotional dysregulation, like, I don't know what, what frame you want to put it in triggers is good. I feel like triggers is a little bit overused and abused also, (laughs) but, but, but when we, when, when people are getting activated and they're in these emotional dysregulated states, it's because that when the amygdala is overactivated, even what prefrontal cortex function you do have, it kind of gets turned off. So we get activated, the, the emotional state takes off, we lose the ability to be rational, to try to navigate the, the situation you know, from an intellectual standpoint. And it's just all emotional, it's reactive, we are technically kind of out of control and it's to different degrees for different people. Uh, so, so that's kind of like the neuroscience, like a basic of the neuroscience behind it. And, and developmentally, the more, the more we neglect the fostering of a properly functioning prefrontal cortex within our children to no fault of, of, I mean, to a minimal fault of our own, like really it's just the world we live in and just how different things are. And it can be hard. And I know a lot of parents are trying their best, but I'm trying to bring this awareness. Like this, this is the kind of stuff that you can latch onto and kind of utilize. But the more we neglect the proper development of that prefrontal cortex, the more our children are going to be dysregulated. They're going to be triggered easy. They're not going to, as soon as they get stressed out, they don't have the skills, you know, and as parents, we see it from this development, developed state, right? Mm -hmm. Where we understand logically and rationally, like, why don't you just ABC? Well, they don't have that development. And even like in adolescence, like they're not even there yet anyway. So they're still working on putting that together. So they don't have the capacity to understand it in the same levels that we do, there's still a lot more emotion. There's still a lot more activation, still a lot more triggering and stuff going on. So, Yeah. So, I mean, as, as a parent, so what you were saying is so interesting about, you know, the parent's responsibility to cultivate that part of the brain and everyone's busy and everyone's, and, and, you know, I know parents are addicted to their phones too, and their devices and, um, you know, a lot of people it feel like school should manage all everything also, um, or daycare. It's, it's really are the parents responsibility, but yeah, the parents the, also have triggers too. Right. 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 So maybe yeah. you can share some experiences that you've seen where a parent is they're triggering and then it's just this awful spiral. The, the first thing with trying to be able to, like, if you want a tool, if you want to, if you want to, figure out, okay, so this is what's happening, but what do I do with it? Like I can share an experience. Our youngest uh, is 15 and she's a teenage girl and I'm a grown man. And if you want to try to find opposites on a spectrum, like I don't, (laughs) I don't really think you can get any farther apart than that. But um, to speak to like the tool that you need, the first thing is you have to build awareness around what you're doing. And when you're triggered as a parent, when you're activated as a parent, when you're in that mindset of, I'm going to make sure that you know that I'm right because I've been here, I've done that, I've lived in the world. And the fact of the matter is the world that that I grew up in, especially I'm 50 years old, the world that I grew up in is gone. The stuff that these children are dealing with is just a completely different thing. And we can't try to pretend that what worked for us is right and is going to work for them. So I can share just a quick little story if it, if it helps as yes, far as let's like hear it. Let's how to build the awareness. So just as an example, we have these fluffy dryer ball things that go in the dryer, right? So when you <laughs> fluff your clothes, it just, it catches static and all these things. It's, it's a, a weekday morning. Macy's getting ready to leave for school, doing whatever she had fluffed her clothes that she's wearing. When she pulled her clothes out, dryer balls come out, they're on the floor that's not where they belong. Right. So here comes my dad. Ready? <laughs> exactly. And, exactly. You know, you, and you know what I mean? Like, here comes yes. my dad. Like, why yes. are the dryer balls on the floor? Yes. Why didn't you see? And why don't you just, and again, this is that differentiation between like, logically we see that adolescents, younger kids, like there's almost a literal representation of the fact that they literally don't see that it doesn't register for them. But anyway, that's not where I'm trying to go. So now I'm, I'm feeling my dad coming up. I'm triggered. We'll use that word, right? And I'm, I'm going to go teach the lesson. We don't leave stuff laying around and all the other stuff that comes along with that, right? 
So, and as I approach her, it's like, Hey, why don't you left the dryer balls on the floor? Go pick it up. And she, there's like this bristling, right? And she, I don't have time. And in my mind, like it takes like, what, like six seconds <laughs> to go. Right. Yes. But we can all relate to this by the way. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And this yeah. is why I love, this is why I love this as an example. I have tons of stories that are just like this, yeah. but this is, this is where, this is where the tool that we're talking about, like, this is where the awareness piece and that's, we 100% have to start with awareness. And that is, I was aware like, Oh, this is my dad. I'm trying to prove a point. I'm trying to teach a lesson. I'm trying to be right. And not just my dad, but me as a parent also, because we want to instill those beliefs and skills and whatever. Um, and, and the awareness is like, okay, I'm kind of activated. I'm, I'm in that mode. Do I really have to prove my point? right now so the awareness is that and it's i don't because i could tell she's already agitated she's bristled because in her mind so let's let's shift into her mind to the best of our ability as a parent like first thing is awareness pump the brakes i don't have to prove my point right now what's going on for her right and this is this is the compassion piece and this is the parenting piece of in her mind she did need to leave for school right now and this is giving her agency it's giving her the authority to make her own decisions plot her own course this is that prefrontal cortex she's already planned i need to leave now because i have to get on the bus because whatever 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 so there's a thought process there that that is trying to be fostered and if you go in and you disrupt that and trigger her back into that emotional state then it makes kind of a disconnect if you understand what i mean so mm -hmm. So the thing is like, what is real for her and the realness of is of that is like, yes, she does need to leave. She knows when the bus is, she knows when the bus is coming. She knows it's time for her to go in order for her to proceed throughout her day, the way that she sees fit. Now I could have stayed in that dad mode. I could have proved my point. I could have made her go pick it up. We don't leave stuff laying around on the floor. We don't leave stuff cluttered. Like there's that whole piece. And the importance of that is more like ego driven. Like it doesn't really matter. Like that's not going to be the lesson that tips the scale for her. Right. It was more about me trying to prove that I was right. So being able to, to catch myself and, and use like the exit strategy. And I talk about exit strategy a little bit and we can cover that a little bit more, if mm -hmm. you want. but it's, it's the complete disengagement of like, this is not where we are right now, because if I do this, we're going to turn into this thing. She's going to get activated, which is going to activate me. And we're just going to go on and on and on. So, step back, let it be what it's going to be. Let her make her own decision. Let her own that, give her agency over that. Let her feel like she's right. She knew what she needed to do. Like, just let her have that and then move on, you know, throughout the course of the, her day or whatever. And we readdressed it later because it wasn't a big deal. And so, yeah, so I guess the tool is like, catch yourself. Like, if you realize that's what you're doing, like, and even just right now, you can probably sit and think of a few times where you were interacting with your kids or you turned into your parent. Totally. You know, and, and, <laughs> and even though we try sometimes to do things that our parents didn't do and try to not do the things that our parents did that we wish they didn't, we're still going to look back and we're going to find stuff that we missed, but we have to try. And it all starts with awareness. Well, yeah. And you know, a lot of times I tell people that, you know, they're the teenagers, especially with teenagers, the logic was there. It was just the delivery that pissed you off. Right. Um, yes. it's just like, she was dismissing you and you're like, you don't dare. That what? You know? It. Yeah. Yes, and yes, like, yes. yeah, it was really just the delivery. And so that's, again, um, that's part of their brain needing to develop delivery and communication is a very, you know, that's a sophisticated skill. Um, and they are still developing that, but yeah, a lot of it is really just the delivery, but I totally know what you're talking about as far as, sounding like my mom and I can hear myself sounding like my mom and I'm still going <laughs> just like, yeah. hey, well, make it stop triggered and activated. Right. And it's, and it's the awareness yeah. of, so what's your, what's your exit strategy in that moment? What does that look like for you? An exit strategy is something you can discuss with your kids. Like, Hey, look, if you, and give your kids the, the autonomy to like, tell you, Hey man, stop. Yes. Like, let's not do this right now. And then be able to recognize that and give them space and give yourself space to come back into this frontal lobe, get out of this emotional state and then address the situation logically, you know, and that kind of helps them with problem solving skills, communication skills. You know, there's just a lot to that, but, but yeah, just kind of discussing and recognizing in yourself, like, oh, here comes my mom. 
all right, wait, 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 wait. What am I going to, what's, what's my out? Do I need to go outside and stand in the grass barefooted? Do I need to put a cold rag right. on my face? <laughs> right. Like what, what does that look like for me? And it's different, you know, for individuals, but. Yeah. Cause you hated yeah. it when they did it to you. Right. right. <laughs> so, yeah. so yeah. So we're going to, we're, it's almost time for a break. So when we come sure. back though, we're going to, you're going to give us tips on um, what to, what to catch, like, you know, what we can, tools we can use to control ourselves and to um, honestly, to how to repair when you blow it really bad. Yeah. Like that's, that's the worst feeling in the world as a parent is when you know you were wrong and you know, you made things worse and they're not talking to you and it's so horrible. So we'll come back with answers. So yes. um, yeah, stay tuned. You're listening to Bright By Your Side with Jen, up-leveling in the age of anxiety on Transformation Talk Radio. And we're going to head to a break. Um, we'll see you in just a minute. Welcome back to Bright By Your Side with Jen, up-leveling in the age of anxiety with groundbreaking science. And today we're here with Jeremiah Fulmer, my guest on triggers and managing emotions and how to control ourselves when we feel ourselves reacting in a way that's not really appropriate or overreacting, um, how to control ourselves and how to manage this as a parent because with all of the other personalities in your house and people who have other triggers too, and you're trying to not go down a spiral and then also how to recover when you blow it. That's what we really also want to make sure we talk about because we all blow it. It's okay. We have to just get past that and, and save your relationship. So um, welcome back, Jeremiah. I'm so glad you're here. Thank you. you. Yeah. So um, I just love the fact that you called out that, you know, what our kids are experiencing now we don't we have no idea what it's like to grow up with this social media thing and and all of the things that are changing yeah and the and the disconnect from from family and and a lot of that is like that social and cultural mom and dad are both working sometimes mom and or dad are working multiple jobs and and also there is a cell phone addiction they're not like even though you might want to be engaging and I, I understand there's people out there that try, but if we take a step back and we look like it really is a problem, there's a lot of disconnect. There's a lot of just plugging the kids in and letting them do their thing. We're tired. We're overworked. We're overwhelmed. We're stressed. There's all that stuff is legitimate. But, but when you realize that that doesn't change the fact that like, we are the only ones who can make any difference and yes. we are completely responsible we're not responsible for the things that happened to us as children that led to our own developmental traumas that show up as generational trauma that spill onto our kids. Like we're not responsible for that. We're responsible for fixing it. And for our managing it. of it. Yeah. Right? Our managing and, of it. Yes. Yeah. So I, I, and, and to talk to what you're speaking on, like, I want to talk about like impact versus intent, mm -hmm. exit strategy, rupture and repair. And what I mean by that. that, um, and this is like the triggers thing, right? So even though you approach your child with the intent of, and, and you can even just be in the calmest of tones and just all the things, and you just have something you want to share or something you want to ask, but we don't know where they are at the present moment. And it doesn't take much. And they're back in this amygdala. They're triggered. They're giving you an attitude, which is like, okay, you're not going to give me attitude. So ready? So here we go. And now we're, now we're climbing the ladder of I'm right and all these things. So that's the awareness that I talk about. Once you realize that's where you are, even though your intent was not to trigger the child, it doesn't take away from the truth of the matter of how that impacted them. And that's mm -hmm. the thing. We want to prove we're right and all these things, but we have to be able to step back and have some compassion, be open-minded, separate ourselves a little bit from it and try to see how it landed for them. And let's, and if it triggered them and it caused a rupture, if it caused a break in the relationship, if it caused a hostile situation, like that's real for them. And if we try to just prove our point and try to just make it us, like we're not going to get anywhere. So that's, a, and I say exit strategy a hundred times. It's the awareness of, okay, here we go. We're, we're starting to climb this ladder. We need out. Both of us need out. And this is a conversation you need to have prior to this kind of thing. Casual dinner conversation, like, hey, especially if you're dealing with a child that you're arguing with frequently, or you guys are triggering each other frequently, build some conversation around like, Hey, look, this is what's happening. 
we need to figure out how to work on this. I want to give you as a child the opportunity to tell me to stop if you feel I need to stop or I'm going to do the same thing. We need to disengage and then talk about what does that look like? Do you go to your room? Do I go to my room? Do I go to the garage? Like what, whatever that looks like for the individuals. Okay. That's important is that exit strategy. And recognizing the rupture, if you don't make it, if the exit strategy doesn't work, if you don't fire it off the first couple of times and things just explode and there's a fight and now your, your child is mad and you're mad and all of these things. So there's the rupture piece, right? Which brings us to the repair, which you have to, again, be mindful of your intent versus the impact that it had and vice versa. This goes both ways. As parents, I feel like we're more responsible but we can we can put this on the child too to try to build awareness around like I know that you didn't intend to piss me off, but you did. Mm -hmm. And 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 being able to have conversation around that. So taking some time. And then what is what are your what are your re what are your emotional regulation strategies? Like even for stuff like this, I have like this little stress thing, right? And yes. for the radio, that. like this is just a squeezy mm -hmm. stress ring. And if I start to feel myself ramping up, getting a little bit activated, like I can use this, nobody sees it. It just gives my body something to do. Um, like I said, uh, simple things like take your shoes off, go stand in the grass and ground yourself. What does it look like for you? Do you meditate? Do you pray? Do you do the cold rag on the face? Uh, tapping, havening. There's just, there's a lot of different stuff out there that you can use to bring the emotional state back down after the exit strategy, or even if you've made it to rupture, to bring yourself back into that prefrontal cortex so that your administrative functions are online and you can then attempt to approach the situation logically while also being open-minded, compassionate, and genuinely, like this is the other piece too, like you really have to be genuinely curious mm -hmm. with your child what happened for you how did it feel? What did I say? Was it my tone? Was it my body? Like, like, let's really take it apart. But you have to be genuinely curious about their side, because if you're just doing it to get to a place where you can prove you were right, they're going to know. They're going to pick up on, you know, through neuroception, they're going to pick up on certain cues and they're just going to know that you're full of it and you're not going to get anywhere anyway. So so that's kind of like an overview of the, of the process to just kind of try to chunk it into something as small as possible. Yeah. I can't tell you how much like the exit strategy is, is so huge. And it, you know, with teenagers, they'll say, teen, you know, that when you were saying it could be a totally nice day and you could be just saying something and they, they say something that, and you know, I joke about being a mom with a teenage daughter, um, you know, the other female in the den, you know, I would just walk in and she'd roll her eyes at me and say something snarky. And I'm like, I, I, I just got home. I mean, you know, it, it was just, but I, the one thing we have to, parents have to remember is that, you know, they'll say something teenagery to you. If you say something kind of not nice back to them, it is soul crushing. It is soul crushing to them too. They will remember that time you said, I'm always lazy you know, mm. and they'll remember that and that'll come up like that. It, oh, it's the, soul crushing. And you're just like, you told me I was always lazy, but that's different. <laughs> like, they expect you to handle it. They can't handle it. No, because they're not really up here yet. Yourself. They're still. Yeah. You really have running. to catch. And it's so, it's, it's so hard for us, right? Cause they're smart and they're, they can be really wicked <laughs> with, cause they're smart. And it, sometimes that, what they're saying has truth to it and it hurts. Um, well, we don't know. We don't understand what it's like for them to be in this world that they're in yes. outside from even bullying, just the social pressures, the click stuff, the social media leveraging. And again, they're living a, a, a lot of screen time is giving them, they're in these emotional dopamine hits. They're getting these endorphins, even from the little six second videos. And if they're, if they spend in a tremendous amount of time in that space, the real world is it's stressful. It's uncomfortable. It's not as much fun. You know, and they're already the with their hormones and just the growth and development that's taking place. They're just it's just a lot for them. So so if we can take a step back and try to have some grace for ourselves, have some compassion for them and try to be genuinely curious about what's going on for them and, you know, and try to give them give them some space and give them some autonomy, give them some agency mm -hmm. over themselves, you know, too. I want to make sure I touch on that as well. Yeah. Give There's them a lot agency. of pieces to try to, 
jam it, into a well, it is, and I think that honestly, though, some of the really most important ones are like the, the just the awareness. Yeah, the that's that's exit the first strategy. Thing. Make it stop. It's spiraling up out of control. You're going to grounding somebody for a year if it keeps going. So exit strategy, um, and then how to de-stress yourself, and then come back at a later time and have a, a calm discussion. I think that's yeah really really helpful stuff. So we're running out of time, and I want to make sure. Yeah. Jeremiah, tell us how people can get a hold of you. Uh, so I, I have just a simple web page. It's growingunstuck.ck. That's like convert kit dot page forward slash discovery. It's just a real. I have the link in the notes. I have the link in the yeah, notes cool. below. So you'll be able to find him in the notes. Um, I have the link yeah, there. And anybody who wants to have a conversation around this stuff, I do like a free one hour discovery call, even if you're not looking for. Uh, coaching and counseling and stuff like that. Even if you've got questions or you want to talk about what we talked about today, like I, this, I, this is my thing. Like I absolutely love being able to show up in spaces and try to bring this knowledge and this awareness and try to help parents, especially make shifts around this so that we can help our adolescents because the world that they're growing up in is just, and what's coming next. Like we just, we have to be able to try to prepare them against all this other stuff that they're fighting with already. Yep. And then I have a couple things to share. I have a free social anxiety masterclass with a free confidence hypnotherapy in it. That's free. That's a big deal. And that's October 30th, 4 p.m. Pacific, 7 p.m. Eastern. If you want to do that, if you want to join us, email info at Bright By Your Side and just put masterclass in the headline, or you can go to brightbyyourside.com. Um, oh, that's info at brightbyyourside.com and put masterclass in the heading and then, or just go straight to this website, brightbyourside.com to the contact page, just fill it out and put masterclass in the box. And I hope to see you there. Also, if you go to the website, brightbyourside.com, there's a pop-up and you can just fill out and get a free instant mood and energy cheat sheet there in energy reset. So it's really just a couple minutes. It's eight steps, reset that mood and energy. Um, you know, especially if you have a difficult conversation coming up or a meeting or a party that you're really nervous about, it's a good thing to practice. Um, and also for triggers, I also want to say hypnotherapy will help you kind of, we can help you take that charge out of that negative thing that's eating away at you. That's causing you to freak out when somebody does something that reminds you of that horrible event in your life. If that's what it is, if some sort of trauma, um, we can help take the charge out of that, but you still have to learn how to recognize all of this stuff. And all of these tools were really, really super helpful. So um, we are out of time. And I just want to thank Jeremiah for being here. I love the fact that we have a dad's voice. I keep telling him that. <laughs> he's such a dad, right? I love that. So um, I just thank you again, Jeremiah. This is super valuable for people in this very stressful world. And my name is Jen. I'm here to help. And this is Bright By Your Side on Transformation Talk Radio. You have been listening to Bright By Your Side with Jen, up-leveling in the age of anxiety with groundbreaking science on Transformation Talk Radio. If you are considering mental health medication for yourself or your child, please try this first. Life skills and gut health are keys to reducing anxiety. Let us show you it's easier than you think. Tune in every Wednesday at 3 p.m. Pacific time to feel optimistic about your own abilities and learn easy, proven ways to live life with ease. Become resilient to stress, anxiety, and overwhelm and find joy. We're bringing you solutions to the problems stressing you out. We do the research for you and present it on a silver platter with a side of fun and laughter. Every show will leave you smiling, optimism and joy in real time. To connect with Jen, visit brightbyyourside.com.